Hello everyone and welcome. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending some Kerbals out towards Jewel, but this is going to require a very long ejection burn. So what we're going to take a look at is why such long burns present a bit of a problem and why the best solution to that problem is to take that burn and split it into multiple shorter burns. We're going to be looking at the maneuver tools that the game provides that allow us to easily accomplish this. Okay, let's get started. Here we have the Jewel 1. Uh, let's see, it can hold eight Kerbals. It has a science lab aboard, so what we can do all kinds of science with it during this long journey out to Jewel. It does feature a deployable heat shield here at the front, which does generate quite a lot of drag and bring the center of lift forward on the vessel. To help counter that, I got a bunch of air brakes here at the back. Here, we can deploy them. Uh, we can pretend that they're radiators for the nuclear engines, even though it doesn't really need them. Um, and that helps to counteract the lift that's coming off of the uh, heat shield that's at the front. And it holds 6,128 meters per second of Delta V, which can comfortably get it to Joule, get a capture around Joule, visit some moons, even get a capture around a moon or two if you want to take some advantage of some gravity assists or some aero braking. And then it can get itself back to Kerbin comfortably with all of that. We can meet our brave crew. We have our commander, Valentina Kerman. And she's being backed up by, well, first off, two of my wonderful patrons. We have as a co-pilot, Trevor K. Kerman. And as our first scientist here, we have Mark E. Kerman. Mara is another scientist. We have Bob Kerman, so we have two, because it does take two scientists to run the science lab. And for our engineer, we got Bill Kerman rounding off our crew of five. So let's get ourselves out to Jewel. We're gonna do this the easy way. We're gonna use the maneuver tool that the game provides with us. We're gonna select Jewel as a target and we're going to create that maneuver. And actually this worked out really, really well. If you take a look, it's coming up in only about 73 days, which is uh, in terms of interplanetary transfer windows, that's coming up pretty quickly. 1,908.2 meters per second of Delta V for the burn. So we can handle that comfortably. But one thing I do want to draw attention to here is the burn time. 13 minutes and 43 seconds. That is a long burn and that adds in some challenges. Now you might be first wondering, why is this burn so long? Well, if I hit the little tab here and take a look, 0.21 is the thrust to weight ratio. So about one fifth of a G is the acceleration that this thing can pull. That's not a huge amount. So you might be first thinking, well, just put more engines on the back. Yeah, I could put more engines on the back, but this thing will get bigger really quickly with that because these nerve nuclear engines are pretty heavy. That will, you know, adding on more mass brings down the Delta V, which means you got to put on more fuel to counteract, which brings up the mass even more. This thing will get really big, really fast. And the truth of the matter is, is once you are in orbit, you don't need big thrust to weight ratios anymore. We can deal with this. But to get us started, why don't we, first of all, just do this maneuver as it stands the way we normally would and we can discover what the problem is. So here we are, we got about a minute to the burn, so let's lock ourselves to that maneuver node. And people are probably already seeing what the issue is. Uh, this is a pro-grade burn, but if you take a look, we are burning pretty much straight down at the planet. And that's because the actual maneuver is really just, just under eight minutes away from us. And by the time we've gone around eight minutes around the planet, then we will be pointing in a pro-grade direction. Why don't we go ahead and just do the burn anyways? And some of you might be knowing where this is going. You may have been there yourself, but let's skip ahead a little bit in the burn where the problem becomes obvious. Oh, and here we are. We can start to see the problem. We are still burning downwards and we have just entered into the atmosphere, which obviously is going to slow us down, but also is going to present, well, a significant danger to our Kerbals. Oh, starting to get some heating effects here. Yeah, we can tell that this is just not going to work from us. And in fact, oh, we're drifting off here. Yeah, we are losing control because of all the drag from this heat shield and all the mass at the back 
this is where all the engines and the fuel are. Uh, yeah, so this isn't going well. But before we get to what is the best solution to this, let's very quickly take a look at a couple of other solutions that some people might be thinking about that do work, but just are not quite ideal. The first being if pointing down is the problem, why not just simply point prograde? I mean, the burn is a prograde burn, and then that will avoid this whole dipping into the atmosphere part. Now to fairly compare each of these methods, let's take a look at the situation just before the burn. Right now we have 6,128 meters per second for this 1,908 meter per second burn. I want to draw attention to how much we will have left once we have accomplished this. Now I didn't just keep this locked on program because I know that's even more inefficient. So once I felt I had enough altitude, I locked it down onto the maneuver node once again. But while it was burning downwards like this, I was keeping a very careful eye on my periapsis. I don't want that to dip back into the atmosphere. Once it started getting a little bit close, I locked it back onto prograde again for a little while until it get built up a little bit and then I finally just put it onto the maneuver node and rode out the rest of it that way. Now spending so much time off of the maneuver node does mess up the maneuver. So at the end I went to map view and started watching it from there. And I'm watching the encounter, not the maneuver, because the maneuver is messed up. I think that's calling it. I'm calling it. So we ended up with 3,822 meters per second of delta V left in the vehicle. So that means our burn cost, 2,306 meters per second. That's 21% more than what the node was saying. Some of you might be thinking of another solution. If the problem is that we're dipping into the atmosphere, why not just start from a parking orbit that's of a higher altitude? So instead of 80 kilometers, let's park this thing into a 120 kilometer orbit and see how that goes. Our burn's a little different now at 1,903 meters per second. Of course, the total delta V of the ship is exactly the same. And this time, we're just going to simply lock it onto the maneuver node and perform this burn normally. Some of you may be surprised to learn that this is still not the best way to do this. I'll let you in on a little secret. That calculation that gets that 1,903 meters per second for the delta V of the burn is based on a very unrealistic assumption. And that assumption is that you perform this burn instantaneously. In other words, the burn takes zero time. Now clearly, that is not going to happen. However, if the burn times are fairly short, then the amount of difference is hardly noticeable and most of us never notice it at all. But as the length of the burn gets longer, that difference starts to become very noticeable. And it has to do with a number of different factors. One is, I mean, just take a look at this burn. I'm, not, I'm burning towards the planet still. Clearly that doesn't even look efficient. But even if I get into the second half of the burn, where I am burning very close to the prograde direction, there is still an inefficiency here, and that has to do with how far away I am now from Kerbin. You see, the closer I am to the parent body, the faster I'm going. And the faster I'm going, the more effect I get out of changing my velocity. We call this effect the O-Birth effect. And to maximize the O-Birth effect, you want to maximize the amount of time you are spending close to the parent body. We're going to get to how we're going to accomplish this very soon, but let's see how this trial turns out. And I think that's probably as close as we're going to get. And looking at our remaining delta V, 3,849 meters per second left this time. So that means that this cost me 2,279 meters per second, which is 20% more than what the maneuver node says it should be. This is barely better than what I did with all the shenanigans in that first technique. Okay, it's time to learn how to maximize the O-Birth effect. Alright, so this time rather than time warping right up and just doing the burn, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our alarm here 
and we're gonna take this alarm that we already have, we're gonna edit it, and we're gonna stop instead of one minute before the burn, I'm gonna stop 30 days ahead of the burn because this technique is gonna require a little bit more time. So what we're going to be doing is we're gonna do this 1908 meter per second burn over a series of a few burns so that we are maximizing how close we are to Kerbin every time we do the burn. Now you do have to be a little bit careful because when you do about 950 or so to 1000 meters per second of this burn, you've already burned enough that you're gonna be escaping Kerbin's SOI and you're not coming back. So the pre-burns can't add up to more than about a thousand meters per second before you're ready to do the, all the rest of it in one big burn but they're still going to help tremendously and setting this up is not too hard we're going to do this actually in a series of three burns we're going to do two burns of about 500 meters per second and then in our third burn we're going to do this ejection boom and be out of here the more burns you do more efficient it's going to be, but you'll see the difference just with three, and it's not that difficult to set up using the maneuver tools that the game gives us. So I'm gonna create a burn here, a maneuver, and what I wanna do is we want all these burns to be right on top of each other. So I'm gonna take this burn, I'm not gonna put anything into it, but I'm going to move it so it's right on top of the burn that we've already had. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this burn, I'm gonna hop it ahead a bunch of orbits. So we're gonna move over to this maneuver one. By the way, the maneuvers are not in the order in which they were created, they're the order in which they're coming up in time. So maneuver one is this one that I just made. Maneuver two is the ejection burn. So back to maneuver one. I'm gonna take this, we're gonna hop it ahead a bunch of orbits, just sort of get it out of the way. That's about it. It doesn't do anything, of course, because we're just hopping ahead orbits and there's no... Uh, the, the magnitude of this burn is a zero. You can also use these little tweak tools to try and get it right on top there as best you can. Okay, now I'm going to put in my third burn. Again, we're going to move it right on top of all the other ones. And this is one that I'm not going to move ahead at all. We're going to keep it right exactly where it is. Remember about a thousand meters per second is going to eject you out of the curb and system. So I'm gonna make this first burn about 500. Well, let's call it 450, let's split it. Now let's call it 500. <laughs> so I'm just gonna flat out put in 500 meters per second prograde into this burn. You have to click, there it is. So there's the burn. And you can see that that messes up all the other burns now because it's just measuring it forward in time. And now that amount of time forward, we're not back here at periapsis. This is our ejection burn, you can tell because there it is. So what we want to do though, is we want to have this burn occur here. This is our second burn here. We don't want it to be burning out here. We want it back at periapsis. So what we all we have to do is grab it again and just move it to where we want it to be, right about there. Okay, easy peasy, lemony squeezy. There we go. And there it is right on top of where we want it to be. There we go. And now we're going to shift over to the second burn. It actually already is on the second burn. And we're gonna put in about 500 meters per second again into that one. 500. I've got to do a click to intenter it. And you can see now that this second burn is just, poof, we're out of here. So that means it's too much. So that's easy to do. We're just going to get to our little tool here, put this up. We'll come down in fives, five meters per second. We want to just have it just ejecting here. So there we go. We can now see our other maneuver. That's okay. Now I don't wanna mess with this maneuver timing too much because this is the one that actually is the ejection. So what I'm going to do is keep bringing this one down until that maneuver just happens to come close to where I want it to be. Now I just noticed that it hopped from one side to the other. So I'm gonna reduce the amount of Delta V. Let's add in some prograde here. Ah, that's working. There we go. Oh, that brought it too far again. <laughs> <laughs> it's popping from one side to the other. That means you need to go the other way. So I'm gonna make another bit of adjustment and we're going to, let's see, retrograde brings that closer. Yes, it does. Okay. And little timing, mean, I'm down to 0 0.05 meters per second for this adjustment here. There we go. We're getting it in really close. And for the final bit of it, because now we're only talking seconds 
between, actually we can dial it down even further. Oh. <laughs> now we're dealing with just seconds here. We can actually take this one and just put it right on top, our last burn. There we go. So now all three burns are on top of each other. And you can see what the sort of plan is. We're going to put our first 500 meters per second into this burn. It's going to put us into this orbit. Then we're going to do a second burn of, what did that turn out to be? 1,417.7 meters per second. That puts us into this great big orbit that gets us out all the way almost to Minmus and then back again. And then we're going to do this last burn, which is going to eject us. Now, the thing to notice about this last burn, oh, <laughs> it happens to still be hitting Joule, but it is hitting Joule way too fast. It's like we're hitting it like a bullet because we've already put in close to 1,000 meters per second, about 950 meters per second into that third burn. So it no longer needs to be, let's get to maneuver three. There it is. It no longer needs to be 1,906 meters per second. It needs to be about 950 meters per second less than that. So we can start to dial this one down. That's easy to do. I'm going to put this on hundreds meters per second and start put it, putting in some retrograde. You can see now, now that we're not hitting Joule, we're going out way too far. <laughs> Bring that down. Okay, we should be starting to see a Joule encounter again. Go by fives. There's our jewel encounter. Okay, and then we can actually at this point of the game. Oh, it's not going to let me focus my my game on jewel, so we're going to get to jewel this way. It's just hitting the tab key. There we go, and I can dial this in a little bit more now. To be honest, don't get too profinicky about this because this is all assuming maneuver three we're on. This is all assuming that you're doing the previous two burns perfectly, which you won't. <laughs> I think that goes without saying, right? So, but you'll have plenty of opportunity to do some tweaking. Yeah, we're gonna just smack right into Jewel. We'll adjust this as it goes. But you can see now we have, let's see, our third maneuver is now at 990 approximately meters per second. And then our previous two are 418 meters per second we'll call it and then one at 500 meters per second so we've taken that initial burn and easily easily split it into a series of smaller burns now you might think oh we're all set we're all ready to go not quite because unfortunately it is really easy to hit Kerbin's wrecking ball which is the moon <laughs> to enter into the moon's SOI the game does not look further ahead than your current orbits. So you really have to be very, very careful. This one clearly won't intersect the moon. This one, if it was intersecting the moon, it would show us, but it's the one, the number two one, that we gotta be a little careful about because it's not even showing it to us. Let's see if we can get the number three one. I think it's because we're already on our way out of here, yeah. Let's take this number three one, we'll move it just a bit so we can see. If we get ahead, there we go. This one here, I'm worried might be hitting the moon. And the way to find out is actually put another maneuver here onto that burn. And here we can see if we were getting a moon encounter here, it would be showing it to us in this encounter, and we're not. And we're not getting a Minmus encounter either. It's something else to be aware of, though that one is more likely. So go in those orbits that cross the moon and put another maneuver node and make sure we can actually delete this one. In fact, while we're at it, just to make sure, let's make sure there isn't an encounter here. There is not. But these will show you whether you have encounters there or not. Now, I like it better when it's back just a little bit so I can actually see all three of my maneuvers. There we go. The period after our second maneuver, that's the one that puts us into this very elliptical orbit. If you put it, if you keep this on maneuver number two, keep that selected, but put it down to the orbital info, it's giving you the period of that orbit. That orbit is 14 days, which means it'll take 14 days, two hours and 17 minutes for us to go around from here all the way up to here. Our third maneuver, if we go to third maneuver here, Remember, our third maneuver here is 30 days in the future. So what I'm considering is if I take maneuver number two, can I pop it ahead 
one orbit so that we don't have to go around this one twice. That's what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna just, this is just an experiment. We're gonna pop ahead in orbit. And you can see that this one didn't end up getting completely messed up, which tells us it's gonna work. It's gonna work just fine. <laughs> so let's uh, see if we can not tweak our last maneuver just a little bit more. This is still maneuver number two, yep. A little, a little adjustments should do it. Oh, re more retrograde. Less retrograde. Okay, that was a little bit too far. Let's bring her back. Okay, and again, we'll tweak this just so that if I select this one all right on top of each other. And just so that purple one there just doesn't disappear on us. Again, we'll take a look at how we are hitting Jewel. Oh, we are missing now. Oh, that's because we took some of it out, of course. So we got to put a little bit back in again. And doing that big orbit only once reduces the chances of you getting a moon encounter. Really, that's really what it's about. That's good enough. We'll fix whatever. Oh, we're quite a bit south of it now, but that's okay. Check on all of this. And again, take a look. Am I getting a moon encounter? So select this orbit, add a maneuver. I am not getting a moon encounter on this particular orbit, so that is a good thing. So, we are ready for us to start doing these maneuvers. So our first job is this one that's coming up in only 11 minutes. Notice that this burn is only three minutes and 56 seconds long. So we're not doing that whole, we're gonna be pointing down to the planet. We are a little bit off from the prograde vector. The more you're off from the prograde vector when you lock it onto the maneuver, the less efficient it is going to be. But this isn't bad. You want more efficiency? do more burns, right? Instead of doing two, do three or do four. Again, though, remember that all those pre ones have to add up to no more than about 950 meters per second, or else you're gonna end up ejecting yourself before you get to your final ejection burn. By the way, the way you speed this up, using the time warp buttons and getting the physical time warp buttons is holding, at least on a PC, the Alt key, and then using your period or comma to either increase or decrease uh, we call this physics time warp, so it means that it's still doing all the physics calculations for you while you're doing this. Um, you can't time warp a huge time, we're only at three times speed here, but it does make these longer burns go a bit quicker. If, however, you're doing physics time warp and this starts going into the red, you might want to, like consistently on the red, you might want to dial it back a little bit because uh, you might be having some trouble doing all the physics calculations that the game wants you to do. Okay, and I'm just gonna try and do this. Boom, that nah, might have overcooked it a little bit. It isn't particularly critical, but we've done that first burn. We now have this second burn coming up, but you can see what we've done is we've put ourselves into this elliptical orbit. Now our second burn, you can see we want it to be right there at our periapsis, and our third burn you can see has come out out here because I didn't do this first burn perfectly. That's what's going to happen. So. Just need to take this next burn here, put it right on the periapsis, which is where we want it to be. And then we need to take this burn and we need to do, again, a little bit of adjusting. Let's, again, we're bringing the third maneuver right down to our periapsis. That's good. You can deal with the last bit of this by just grabbing it and putting it where you want it to be. Adjust again. Here we're just doing an adjustment based on seconds and that's fine. Okay. And you know what? I'm not gonna bother doing the jewel tweak. Oh, we still got our jewel encounter, that's all right, because obviously I'm not going to be doing this second burn perfectly either. Well, let's move it just a little bit more. There we go. <laughs> so there is the orbit we're going into. Again, we don't have a moon encounter, but be on the lookout for those moon encounters. You can use the moon as an actual assist, gravity assist to help you get out there it is a lot of setting up to do and frankly from my own perspective i usually find it not worth it the amount that you gain uh in delta v by doing a gravity assist on the moon compared to the amount of time you need to spend to set it all up ain't quite worth it again we're nice and low we want to maximize how close we are to kerbin for as much of the burn as we can that's how you take advantage of the overth effect 
And while I perform this penultimate burn, you might be noticing down there next to the subscribe button, there is now a join button. This allows you to become a member of this channel. The prices and perks of membership are exactly the same as they are for my patrons. So if you are interested in becoming a member of this channel, all you got to do is click on that join button. And why don't we welcome aboard my first four members, Pierre Dejeu, Simon Kopak, Jeremy Harris, and Bert Wilson. Also aboard is my most recent patron, Sean Walker. A special thanks to those five and of course as well to all of my patrons and members whose continued support help keep this channel going. Okay, I'm trying to do this as accurately as I can but oh that worked out pretty well. Close that off and now we only got one burn left again it got messed up but that is what is going to happen so what we need to do is we need to grab this one we need to simply take it to our periapsis. No more orbital tweaking to do now. Put it right onto our air periapsis because that is where we're gonna want to do this burn. I'm noticing this is actually, the burn is in 57 days, so we're actually gonna bring it back orbits. I'm not 100% sure why the game does that kind of thing to us. It just sometimes does get confused. So now the burn's coming up in 19 days and that is a nice match to what our current orbital period is. So that makes perfect sense. Obviously now we are going to tweak this one last time. And as you can see, we're now coming a little bit north of Joule. That's okay. This is happening just because of slight changes in the exact timing of this ejection burn. But a mid-course correction to correct for this is hardly going to be anything, so it isn't anything to worry about. And then we got our one big lazy orbit still to do to bring us back down close to Kerbin to do this final burn. This one is a longer burn, 6 minutes and 44 seconds, but there was no way around that part of it. Um, and that's because we've done as much as we can within the Kerbin system. The rest of the, you know, it's we're going to be ejecting very early in this burn. We didn't have the opportunity to do more, but look how we're roaring in towards Kerbin. Look at what our speed, our speed is roaring up as well. The more speed you have when you do these prograde or retrograde burns, the more effect you're going to get, and that is what we call the Oberth effect. And do a little bit of physics time warping. Oh, there's our ejection from our camera doobity dom right away. So to quickly summarize, if you are faced with a very long ejection burn, your best course of action is to take that single burn and break it up into multiple burns. The more burns you do, the more time you spend close to Kerbin, and the more efficient your burns are going to end up being. But Remember that all of those preliminary burns, all those burns you do before you do that final ejection can't add up to more than what it takes for you to eject out of Kerbin's SOI and that is in around 950 meters per second. No matter how you split it up, you'll likely end up having to do one big final burn at the end. Slow down here for the last bit of this. I think it's looking pretty good. We got our jewel encounter. I can see that. Jewel is such a lovely big target. Actually, finish off this burn right to zero. There we go. How'd we do? Focus this on jewel. There is our jewel encounter again. Easy thing to tweak this the rest of the way mid course. But these folks are on their way to jewel. 4,123 meters per second left, which means the combination of all that in real fuel came out to be 2,005 meters per second, which is only 5% more than what the total was of all of those maneuver nodes. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this video to a close. I hope you found it useful. I hope it will help you be more efficient in these ejection burns. And I also hope to see you again next time.